What's going on guys? Welcome, welcome back to Dan Reacts. I'm Dan. This is my reaction channel. We are here with the one and only official Night's Watch woman, Addie. How's it I going? I know, it's going so well. I know. <laughs> We're very excited. We have the last two episodes of Thrones. Yes. Ever. I know. How are you feeling about that statement? I'm actually, I'm feeling more sad than I thought I would feel. Yeah. Because this was such a like fun project to do but also like I love this show now right I just love this show so it is very sad to know that like this is it for them yeah I mean we always bring it up we do still have House of the Dragon but like but it's for this, this cast, cast and, like and story and and just like for worth. like all of this effort that like you've put in to make this such a good experience I'm, I'm a little sad to see it go. Me I've had too. such a wonderful time. Me too. You know, like, the hype, obviously, has been, like, a year's worth of watching. But as we've discussed, I've been trying to get her to watch this since, like, 2014. Yeah. So the <laughs> fact that, like, not only did I get her to watch it, but now that entire project is over, I'm like... I am kind of happy, though, that in a selfish way that it's all like documented so right that's we can why go back and relive this experience that's exactly why i initially started this channel was yeah. because i love watching reactions of other people experiencing my favorite moments in movies and tv shows um and so when i knew that i was going to be showing you new things it started out as me just wanting to have document of this journey yeah and we got to cheers. It's so exciting, we but it's also cheers. so sad. I got to... Okay, this cape makes the arm movement a little difficult. So now difficult. you somewhat understand how hard it is to fight in those things. I don't know. <laughs> like, John fights in those things I a lot. I can't fight... I don't think I could fight at all, regardless, but definitely not in this. This is a big episode. Going into it, how are you feeling? We just left off with Masande brutally getting decapitated for yes. what felt like no, no fucking reason. reason no fucking yeah. reason. Danny just lost another dragon. Well, you know what sucks and what I was thinking about is that they just came off of this, like, we all sat down together and had this agreement. Cersei didn't honor it. And now it's like Cersei's punishing Masande. Like, it, it, to me, it just kind of doesn't make any sense. Right. Like, I understand, you know, Daenerys is coming for your crown. So I get that. But also, like, I mean, you chose not to participate in a war that could have killed not only no you, but everybody upset. knows. Yeah. Everybody you know. And you're, instead of trying to have some kind of, like, dialogue first with people, you're choosing to just, like, behead someone who had, uh, I mean, next to no part in that battle in the first place or Daenerys' decision making, like... You're just doing this to be evil and hurtful, to be evil and, hurtful and it so, felt it's so. Hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I know we're we're at the climax, so shit's gonna go down. But it's like usually Cersei's more like sneaky about the way that she goes about things. I mean, I haven't seen her parade someone up to the top of a building and behead them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like she likes even to when at Ned least... Stark was in that she moment likes she to was justify against it, it mm -hmm. at least you know what i mean if she's gonna do something she likes for it to at least appear that she's doing the right thing you know inviting everybody into the red keep and making it appear as though she's protecting her people and doing all of that and so really it just, is just using them as bait yeah so it felt very like messy of her to just like behead an innocent woman mm -hmm. for no reason other than like I want to make Danny mad. Other than like I know that this is her number one girl and it's right. gonna make her mad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm a little upset about it, but well, and I feel like like you, obviously there's the obvious Danny's coming for your throne, but typically Cersei's evil against people who are either have done her very wrong or are like indirect threat of her, have and I just don't her, feel like yeah. Danny's. Really cross that line that. yet? No, you know, All the, the only interaction Cersei's had with Danny has been an that effort one of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Like Danny did not say I'm coming. As far for as your Cersei's throne. concerned, she should have a decent impression of Danny because Danny got, yeah. got, showed up, tried to have a conversation with her, and then this is the only the second time she's Danny like seeing her. In she the didn't face. attack your people. She didn't threaten you. She asked for your help. She put her own efforts of you know, conquering aside to fight this war that you didn't participate in. And now you're 
like mad like I don't know like I get it because there is it's she's obviously coming for your throne but yeah it just felt very like messy to me it's like when she kills the high sparrow marjorie loris that felt like seasons coming yes you know what i mean like it had been seasons of marjorie high sparrow put her in a dungeon right you know what i mean like she had in her perspective, every reason to do that. Mm -hmm. And, like, Marjorie, she was disrespectful to her. She had moments with Cersei where she was pretty directly, like, Mm -hmm. you're not the queen, I'm the queen, you know? Danny hasn't had that moment with her, so it just feels... It feels very, like, we're jumping the gun a little bit doing that. Explain why she's doing that. How did she get to that point? There was not even, like, a scene of her, like, deciding to do that, justifying why she's doing it. Like... There wasn't even any, it was like they just showed up and there they were and it happened and it was like, yeah. That's why I almost feel like I didn't get, I love Masande and I still didn't even get that emotional about it because I was like just confused. Like what is going on right now? And to me, I'm like, Cersei, I love her as a villain because every time that she gets a scene, where she is sort of explaining herself, you come out the other end, not on her side, but like, even if she's blinded by hatred or blinded by love or whatever her case may be, you understand like why she's doing it. This was very just like Cersei being evil to be evil. Like Mm -hmm. it feels very like comic book villain. She's the bad guy. She's doing the bad thing because she's the bad guy. It's like, no, I would have liked the scene to like explain where her like fury is coming from and where her mental state is at instead of just like she's on top of the building cutting Masande's head off Mm -hmm. and it's just one of those things too where given the fact that the season's shorter and then you think about all these things that you could have used yeah like like, why did we not draw this this season not 10 episodes yeah that's in my opinion the number one issue with this final season yeah and i think would have solved a lot of other people's issues if it had just been explained in a more Game of Thrones fashion. Tell the story, fashion yeah. Of just, you know. Because even season seven, I had the complaint towards the end of, like, I feel like they rushed a lot of things. And that was even more episodes than this season. So it's like, I mean, this is the finale. This is, we're ending the story. So it's like, take as much time as you can to explain where everybody is at mm-hmm. instead of just being like, this is what We'll happened. watch it. We'll watch it. I yeah. have no problem watching an extra four episodes. Right. Like, we we'll, would prefer that. We'll consume it. Don't think that it's like, oh, they don't want to watch that many. No, we will take 20. I'll take 30. <laughs> like, give me 40 episodes. Give me three more seasons. Like, we're good. Like, yeah. So I'm very, very anxious for you to see how this last two episodes play yeah, out. Yeah, I am too. Um, let's not, let's not waste any more time. Let's take one final cheers. Not a final cheers. Final cheers before this episode. Right. We're going to be cheersing probably a number of times in this episode. Whatever that means. Or actually, I don't know. <laughs> TBD. Again, I have to just play off of what you give me. Yeah. So we may be choosing, we may not be choosing. Who fucking knows what happens? We shall see. We shall see. All right. Game of Thrones, season eight, episode five, The Bells. Oh, boy. Barris. How is she? She hasn't seen anyone since we returned. They say every time a Targaryen is born, The gods toss a coin, and the world holds its breath. What do you want? All I've ever wanted. The right ruler on the Iron Throne. While she... She is my queen. He did not like that. Varys is really like... He's trying. He's campaigning. But it's like, don't you want to make sure the people you're talking to at least are on your page? (laughs) Like, you're just going to go talk to anybody? I mean, he's got to feel like... He must be feeling desperate to be... I mean, he never does that. Someone has betrayed me. Jon Snow. No! Clarice. He knows the truth about Jon. He learned from Sansa. And she learned from Jon. Though I begged him not to tell her. 
she trusted you to spread secrets that could destroy your own queen, and you did not let her down. Our intentions were good, but it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. She looks tired. She looks... She looks exhausted. Done. Oh, no. That was eerie how he just knew. He kind of took everything off and... Burned the last letter. Burned evidence. the last letter. I hope I deserve this. Truly, I do. I hope I'm wrong. Goodbye, old friend. Tracaris. Damn. She said, if you ever betray me again, I'll burn you alive. What did I say would happen if you told your sister? I don't want it, and that's what I told him. Now she knows what happens when people hear the truth about me. I don't have love here. I only have fear. I love you, and you will always be my queen. Is that all I am to you? Your queen. <sighs> all right then. Let it be fair. Ready the other side. Cersei's followers will abandon her if they know the war is lost. Give them that chance. If you hear them ringing the bells, call off the attack. Wait for me outside the city. You'll know when it's time. Your brother was stopped trying to get past our lines. It seems he hasn't abandoned your sister after all. The next time you fail me, the last time you fail. How are we feeling about this right now? What's your thoughts? I'm Give feeling me... dismal. I mean, I just feel like she's just ready to abandon everything. I feel like she like wants to be loved so much that she's like willing to be hated to get that. That's not the way to do it. And this really is the first time she hasn't experienced immediate love. Right. And gratitude. Yeah. She's not going about it her usual way either. And usually she speaks directly to the people. She's a better Valyrian speechmaker than she is an English speaker speechmaker. I mean she hasn't even tried. Like, talk to the people. They don't like Cersei. Let them rise up. Hey yo. Where are you going? I'm Arya Stark. I'm going to kill Queen Cersei. I need to go talk to my captain. Yeah, talk to him. <laughs> Do whatever you Fine, want. Fine, whatever. We're we, leaving. We're going. We're to leaving kill immediately. How did they find you? Yep, that'll do it. She's going to die. Unless you can convince her to change her course of action. Tyrion, I mean, Jesus. When have I ever blamed Scrooge Cersei for anything? Yeah. It's not gonna work. I mean, she's gonna find out you did this. Like, you're dead. She literally just told you. If you do this one more time, I'm gonna fucking kill you. And he's like, got it. On my way. Escape. The two of you together. Sail out of the bay. If the winds are kind, you'll make it to Pentos. 
start a new life. If you don't, you never see Cersei again. Ah, oh, this is stupid. This is stupid and a bad idea. I never thought I'd get to repay the favor. Tens of thousands of innocent lives. One not particularly innocent dwarf. Seems like a fair trade. If it weren't for you, I never would have survived my childhood. You were the only one who didn't treat me like a monster. Oh. Jamie risked his position to save Tyrion. He's returning the favor. It's beautiful, honestly. I'm glad they gave Tyrion a fucking scene like that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's been a while since I've seen him like be able to speak like Tyrion. And I'm just a sucker for the Jamie Tyrion relationship. Me too. Like it's just the brothers. <laughs> you were the only one that didn't treat me like a monster. Like Kay just stabbed me in the heart. Seriously, make me regret every negative comment I've said over the last two minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at these two. I fucking love them. I am all in on Arya. She is just the baddest bitch. In the land. She is the baddest bitch alive. She just does what needs to be done. She doesn't talk about it. She really is like, don't talk about it, be about it. Mm -hmm. Like, say it with your chest. We love Arya, even though she might probably die doing this, but. If you hear the bells ring, they have surrendered. You call off your men. Dragon? Well, we do love a good <laughs> Danny moment. We love a good fire breathing, fuck up shit moment. Well, that's how you clear out an army. Coming right in hot. You're done. Oh, we still have Dothraki? I thought they were like all dead. The anti John. John was in that exact circumstance and stood up and took his sword out. But yeah, but he went down. This guy ran away. Did not make it. Wow, I really thought we were all out of Dothraki. What a pleasant surprise. Oh god, you're so fucked. It's not going well. The Scorpions have all been destroyed, Your Grace. The Iron Fleet hold Blackwater Bay. No, they do not. Your Grace, the Iron Fleet is burning. She's just like, if I say it out loud, it'll be true. If I'm going to manifest it. <laughs> You're like, no, this is happening now, Cersei. There's no manifestations. 
Red Keep has never fallen. It won't fall today. It it's falling. I need her level of confidence. I have bad life. news for you, Cersei. She is committed to the fantasy. They will fight harder than cell swords ever could. Like they are not even coming close. They're not they're not even making an attempt really. Go ring the bell, Tyrion. Good. Yuan <sighs> says, Don't do anything fucking crazy. Do not get crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Brand's vision. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Like, why? They put their swords down. Like, why are we doing this? You can tell that's for Masande. Yeah, oh yeah, he's pissed. But it's still just like... When people surrender, you don't slaughter them anyways. These are just innocent people. She's just blown it. Like, her last supporters now are, like, not on board anymore. Kill Cersei if you want to, but you're burning the whole fucking city. These people do not care who wins. Kingslayer! It's over. And I fucked the queen. Oh. Oh. If I win, I'll bring your head to Cersei so you can kiss her. No. Jesus. Ah. 
Oh my god. It's a crazy fuck. I'm the man who killed Jim and Aniston. <laughs> Not really, but okay. He he walked away. <laughs> he just is who he is. I mean, I'm kind of like <laughs> you got to give it up for him. Euron is straight to the bone. Look at me. Look at me! You come with me. You die here. Sandor. She called him Sandor. She said thank you. Jesus. I don't know how else I pictured this going, but this is just like a nightmare. I mean, what are you ruling? Like you burned everything down. Grace. Sid Wiggle, stay by my side. He said, no. Sid Wiggle, I command you. Obey your queen, Sid Wiggle. Oh, oh, whoa! Shit. Cersei said, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to leave you guys to it. I'm just going to. I'm just going to exit stage I know. Left. I know when it's my time to go. The fact that he didn't kill her. like He's here for one reason. I know, but Jesus. She means nothing at this point. She has nothing. Cersei is alone.
You hurt. The way they have just flipped this narrative, like we are sitting here crying bad for over Cersei. Cersei and Jamie right now. God, like give me something. Oh no. He's dead already. Can't really kill him. Oh, come on. Get up, Arya. Take my hand. Take my hand. Get up. Get up. Oh, my God, it's a lady. What is Danny still burning? Right, like, what is she doing? What are you Why still is she burning? raging like this? Everything's burned. You have nothing to even take over anymore. I mean, it's gone. You killed everybody. You did... You leveled the city. Like, just fucking stop. Jeez. Can you see? Cut his fucking head off, like... Wake up, wake up, wake up, please wake up. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay, baby. Get out of there. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. This way. I want our baby to live. Don't let me die, Jake. Please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. Look at me. I don't like this. Look at me. Just look at me. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters.
Well. I'm not happy. It's an insane episode. Let's, I mean, like, it's one of, how do you even begin? I'm just, I'm not happy with that whole, like, the whole episode. I am not pleased. I'm so angry at what Danny chose to do. It's so depressing to root for someone for so long and then just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that was horrific. Like, I'm, how am I rooting for Jamie and Cersei at the end of this? Right. It's very, um, it's very telling on the direction style and just how the episode was formatted that we were able to, and it happened a number of times. There's also moments, I don't know if it happened for you, but you like see the Stark soldiers very violently attacking innocent people. And then you simultaneously see- They look like the bad guys. You simultaneously see Lannister soldiers shuffling them to safety. And it's one of these moments where you realize- we're the invaders. Like we're the bad guys now. It's, and they dropped their fucking swords. They surrendered. You didn't have to- that's the thing to me. It's like you this was not necessary. They were not going to fight you. You could have gone up, killed Cersei, and that could have been it. They rang the bells. Nobody was going to fight you. And you already made a promise that you weren't going to do this. If you heard the bells, that means they're surrendering. You'll call off your men. And you just were so angry that you just didn't do it. There was no need for any of it. It was so violent and so horrible. And it's not even just the lives. Like, this is a city. Buildings, castle. Like, you burned it to the ground. So I don't even know where you're... What you're wanting to rule anymore. It's like, it's gone. It makes me so angry that here we are in the second to last episode. And it's like Danny's turning into a completely different person. Like, she just lost touch with who she's supposed to be and what her whole mission has been. Six Completely. episodes ago, she was very adamant that she was not here to be Queen of the Ashes. And what are you? Like, you burned this whole shit to the ground. It was crazy. It's crazy, and it's like like we said in the beginning of this episode, it's not the outcome that bothers me. I think it is the actually way they fascinating, go about it. and it's quite predictable in a sense, um, because there has been foreshadowing throughout the show of her being a true Targaryen and like right. doing this type of stuff. I just feel like yeah, but you need it's, to explain it's, it. it's not it's not nearly as explained as creatively and as well as it could have been. They took away yeah. all her people and then said, see now she's crazy. Well uh I don't know about that. I don't know. And it's just like it's sad to see it's disappointing as a viewer and it's just not it's just not explained well enough that was just depressing that whole episode was just depressing and it felt so needless like that was not it didn't need to happen and it's it's crazy how like you know 40 minutes will go by with other characters and then you'll realize oh my god she's still burning the yeah, city she's just keeping like, at 40 it. minutes have gone by like, i forgot there, she was doing that is there anything that will stop you at this point like you just want to see everybody die that's your goal You're not trying to accomplish anything. You're not trying to kill Cersei. You're trying to kill everybody. Like, it's a genocide. It's horrible. And it's so not... It's such a sad, like, way to end her character. You know? You're like, this is what she became. It's just sad. It sucks. I mean, it was... There were a lot of, like, very touching moments. The the episode has moments that are great yeah no they they did what they did with i mean there was a lot of good moments it just was like i was just really hoping it wouldn't go that way yeah but well let's take a deep (sighs) breath yeah let's get into your notes well in the beginning of the episode Tyrion's conversation with jamie touching very touching and it's very nice he brings it back to like we're brothers Mm -hmm. and i still owe you some 
type of debt for the life that we've lived together. Mm -hmm. And the life that you gave me when you saved my life. And they put, they kind of like zoom out and put that in perspective of like, this is not just the here and now happening. Like Tyrion and Jamie's relationship has mm -hmm. so many ebbs and flows and so many things have transpired that like, at least they make it make sense why mm -hmm. Tyrion's doing that. Well, and I love the line where he's like, a city of innocent people, one not so innocent dwarf. Like, it's yeah. just a really beautiful moment that shows that, like, yes, he's loyal to Danny and yes, he wants to serve his queen, but, he but wants this to is do his right brother thing. and he is going to save his brother. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if she's threatened to kill his life, he will die for his brother. And yeah. It's just, oh. Yeah. It's Sibling touching. love is just something else. Yeah. And then Danny and Tyrion's conversation was very disappointing. Like, when she was saying, you know, he's trying to tell her Varys betrayed you mm. and she's kind of already past that and doesn't, she just doesn't seem to trust anybody that is loyal to her anymore. Mm -hmm. So his advisement in that moment, you could already tell, like, it doesn't matter to her. Well, and so I, you're it, saying Varys betrayed me, but I think everybody, I think all of you betrayed me. Right. And I, I do in a at. sense understand that perspective. Cause it's like, when you look at it, Tyrion's arguably the, the longest person she's known now at this point and has only known him for like two years. Yeah. All of the people that she actually trusted actually are gone. Are gone. So in a sense, I get the... The mistrust. The isolating. Yeah. Uh, the isolation that she's putting on But it's frustrating because it's like he still is... These people still are on your side. Mm -hmm. And she is just in a place where she doesn't believe anyone's on her side anymore. Even though they are. And so to see that, like, that conversation was foreshadowing of, like, how she was going to perceive everything else. Because he's trying to come to you with information and tell you what's going on. And you're not, just not having it. You're like, not receiving that he found out information and is coming to you about it. All you're hearing is there was negative information yeah. about you. You guys all played a part in this. And you're just trying to, like, save your ass by coming to me with it. Mm -hmm. Which is not what was happening. He defended her to Varys, John defended her to Varys, like, they were not trying to participate in this coup, you know, like, they were, they really had her back, and she, like, didn't want to believe it. Varys dying was very sad. End of an era, end of a moment. He was, like, yeah, one of the last OGs to even have stuck around this far, mm -hmm. and to have, like, crawled his way to the top so many times, and he actually did do, I mean, ultimately, seems to have been on the right side, you know? He was correct. Yeah. I mean, he even said, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm dying for a reason, yeah. And he was correct. Yeah. So his death was very hard, and, like, his last conversation, what he was saying to Tyrion was very, like, sad. Mm-hmm. They've had such a long history together. They've that been it's through just so like, much. It's just, like, to see these two characters be taken apart by somebody that doesn't know them that well yeah and doesn't have that much you know danny's very much an outsider to this storyline yeah so to see this storyline be separated by somebody who was never a part of it is always like as an audience it's member like, like a little frustrating i would have almost rather see cersei kill Daenerys because she at least was right. more involved at least it would be like that you know you guys have history that makes sense mm -hmm. you would want to kill Varys. like yeah danny is like <sighs> And then John and Danny, they're... All right, then. Yeah. Let it be fair. Like, oh, chills, honestly. Because when she and says it's like, that... And it's, like, just over and over again. It's like, it doesn't have to be this way. It does not have to be this way. You could just take a step back from your anger and your hurt and try to continue your journey. But she was just, like, she's so over it. I also think John is... Again, just a little too noble and honorable sometimes. Like, y you clearly have the power to heavily influence this girl's state of mind. Just kiss her and make her feel good. And then, like, tell well, her what you want to tell her Well, and he said, like, I week. love you. And it's like, so you love her. So right. then just, like, tell her, you know, I want to be your husband. I want to, like, I want you to be the queen. I do not want this. Which he kind of did say. And she just, like, wasn't. She needed more from him. She knows that it doesn't matter what he wants. The people are going to fight for you. All that would have made her happy was, okay, let's kill Sansa. Let's kill everybody that knows. Yeah. And he's not going to do that. So I wrote under things I like, like, oh, yay, they surrendered. They rang the bells. But then you literally, like, the bell rings. You start writing. I look at you and, I go, like, and I go, mm, that's so fast. 
Like my eyes start switching. I'm like, I, uh. And then immediately I wrote under things I don't like. Danny still is attacking anyways. So it's like this moment of like, oh, yay. Like not everybody has to die. They dropped their you swords. You should have known better. Yeah. You should have known better. I know. Whatever. Um, Euron's death was a trip. <laughs> I mean, you gotta kind of like Euron. Like, I ended up kind of just being, not liking him, but just being like, damn, that crazy that's in you, like, that narcissistic crazy brain is really who you are. It's I mean, real. It's that real. is to the bone who you are. In your final moments, you were still smiling, being like, I killed Jamie. Like, you, I mean, at, you the, did at the very least, he is who he is. Yeah. We, there, we love a consistent human. Yeah. There was no, like, fear. There was no, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. There was no regret. He did what he wanted to do. And he was happy with it. And he's a fucking crazy person. And his death was satisfying. Yeah. And, I mean, you, for a couple minutes, thought that Jamie might eat the dust in that Oh, scene. yeah. Yeah. Well, when he stabbed him... In the fucking abdomen, like, all the way through. I thought he died right then. What a horrible way that would have been for Jamie to go. Yeah. That being said... I mean, it was, like, a couple minutes before he, like... I would say, that being said, died. how do you feel about the way that he has gone? And Cersei as well. I mean, I get it from a storytelling perspective. I thought it was, like... Sometimes all there is for the toxic couple is the toxic couple. <laughs> sometimes that is what it is. And there's something to be said for... Two people who know that what they're doing is wrong and, and they know that they could have a better life and they could be better people and they could make different choices. But some like palpable magnetic energy between them makes them come back together. Like almost they don't have a choice in the matter. Right, it's fate. It's almost destiny saying, no, you guys are bound together you were born together you're gonna die together this was never going to be any other way and so it's like when you see them coming back together it does feel like you know would i have liked to see jamie do something else yeah but you know it's not about what we want as viewers they this is who they are mm -hmm. and it i makes sense and for even the setting that they died in, like, to be in that, like, where the dragon skulls are and to have gone all that way to try to, like, escape and not be able to try quite make it out is just very, it's very them. And it is very sad that they did try to escape and they were actually trying to get out of there. And the idea that, like, the two of them were going to just ride off on a boat. It's almost sad that, like, they tried and, they, it, try and, and it, they got stuck. They were, yeah, I think their, like, fates were just intertwined. And, and watching her be like, I don't want to die. It's like... And her last words being, I was I remember thinking in the moment, like, the way that they gave her last words about her baby. Like, being like, I want my baby to live. I want my baby to live. Like, please don't let me die. It's, I mean, that's her. That's in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, she is everything that she is, but ultimately, she doesn't want her baby to die. And his line, nothing else matters, it's just mm -hmm. us, we love a that callback. callback yeah. We love a callback, you know? So, it sucks. I would have loved for it to be, like, Jamie and Brienne, and that's that. But, like, Jamie and, even Jamie and Brienne's connection, like, he's a better person when he's with her. They have this, like, we love them together. But, like, Jamie and Cersei is, like, it's Jamie and Cersei. It's Jamie and Cersei. Like, there's... You That's can how the do show started. whatever you want in the world. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be them. Mm -hmm. You know. Hound and Mountain. <sighs> that shit was crazy. Crazy, emotional, anxiety inducing. Him Watching... like trying to kill the hound the Fucking same died. way that he killed oh my Oberyn. God. I was like, mm, I and you hear the this again. Like, cracking kind of yeah. start to play. Oh, God. And he, I mean, the hound, it was like. He decided, like, this is it. This is how I'm going to die. And he 
couldn't kill him and then he's like fine fuck it then we both we die we both die so poetic for like him- he's like i'm gonna kill you mm-hmm. i that is the my storyline like mm-hmm. he was like i'm going to kill my brother i would like to not die but it looks like i'm so i have it. to yeah and him falling into the fire is so poetic because that's how his brother burned him initially right. so for him to push his brother in the fire, fire yeah it's like it's crazy a very beautiful poetic moment and yeah. i that moment where sandor is getting trampled and simultaneously Arya is too yeah as the audience it kind of makes you think are they both are they both about gonna die, to die right at the now? same yeah. time right oh now? i know i was like Get the fuck up Arya. like and then for her like it almost seems very on the nose i don't know about you but like for her to find a white horse at the end, it was like, okay. Like, Symbolic. Like, we get it. Like, she's the white horse. We know. But it was nice for it to be like, how did you survive? And then t- for her to see a white fucking horse. Like, how did you survive? Like, how did how is this little guy still here? They're the survivors. Mm-hmm. If nothing else. I mean, how much has Arya fucking just gotten through for no reason? So yeah. it makes sense, but. And there are moments very touching. Yeah. Together where he's like, girl, wake up. Like, go home. You're not doing this with me. And for him, for her to realize, you're right. Like, this is the end of your line. This is not where I die. And when she says Sandor, it's like the first time. I don't even think she calls him the hound. I don't even know if she ever ever address him in the show. So for her to even just address him and And then then say, say, Sandor, thank you. It's like, it's very Theon brand moment. It's like, ugh. And Arya and him we would have loved for them to have like a sweet little let's sit down and say our goodbyes. But that's not them. That's not them. That's not them. So for her to just do that it was enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That poor woman and her daughter. I know. They're like kind of these main characters that get plucked out of just the, the in crowd this just to show you show, like yeah. how important this could have meant for people. Mm-hmm. And it's just terrifying to see that like they end up getting burned alive. And everybody. It's like And it's kind of trying... Arya's fault because she's like, we need to leave. Immediately gets burned alive. It's but like, also if like you had just stayed in the building. <laughs> but also like that building probably got burned down. Maybe. Like you never everything know. got burned down. So it was like she was trying to help. She was trying to save people. You can't save anybody. Danny's killing everybody. Danny's killing everyone. Yeah. Kyburn. Just like grabbed by the head, thrown <laughs> to the ground. I know when that happened, I was like, "Well, that's not how I expected him to die." But I love that he died quick and easy. Let's not waste any time on this Done. character. Let's not. He's dead him. now. Uh, He's alive. He's dead now. He alive, but he did. He alive, but he did. And then Cersei's like, she's like, "Fucking, see I'm ya. gonna just go I'm gonna, that This way. looks like a brother thing. I'm gonna go find my brother thing." <laughs> And we'll just... I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. I love John throughout the whole episode, too, because... Yeah, he's having this, like, conflict of, like... This crisis. He is the hero character. And now he's on the side that is causing just, like, demolition in this place. So, yeah, to see him towards the end, like, just doing the right thing no matter what. Like, he supports Danny. He's on this side... But he sees, like, mm, this is not right. This is not right. And I'm not going to, like, attack innocent people. Yeah. And the entire time, from the moment that she decides to attack, he's still saying, like, fall back, go back, stop, stop. The entire time. Like, he does not want this to happen. He doesn't participate unless somebody is about to kill him and then he kills them. But he's, like, trying to fall back. That was the penultimate episode of Game of Thrones. The Bells. Yeah. It's, uh... It's quite an episode. It shook the world. It was absolutely just one of those moments where you end the episode, you go on social media, and you see that... Just, like, what the fuck happened? Everybody is, like... We all watched the same thing, right? Like, we all just watched that. Uh, Okay, great. Yeah. And, uh... Not loving it. And it's... In a lot of ways, I feel like, yeah, they're giving these characters these, like, moments, but I'm also just so upset about the way that a lot of it feels very like lackluster storytelling and like lots of explosion and death for kind of just the sake of explosion and death you know what I mean and that's probably just because they don't have very many episodes but yes I mean the storyline going the way it does sure like Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones we can't have anything but like it's more of the I don't understand why the fuck this is happening 
feeling that I'm not happy with. And you know what I mean? Going off of that, like, I agree. It's not that I'm, like... It's not that I can't deal with Danny having this arc. Like, of, like this could have been a great scene. We're going scene crazy. We're choosing to do been... this. But, like, you're not... The storytelling is there in some moments. We get these, like, nice scenes of, like, you know, when people are about to die, we give them a really nice, like, final death scene. But, like, how did we get here? That's what I'm, like, stressed out about. It's just that I'm, like, these characters are not these characters Danny is having this fucking shit show of a storyline that's just I feel like I don't understand why it's happening like and I if I really like sit and think about it yeah I do but I don't want to have to sit and think about it I want you to tell me why she's doing what she's doing like I don't want to have to infer things you know best season ever best season ever uh, Addie saw that uh, interview of Amelia yeah. Clark where she's asked and she goes I feel so bad for Amelia Clark too because you're playing this fucking badass character for so many seasons and then like if I were her reading the script I'd be like they're doing it I think all the actors are doing a phenomenal job like bottom line all of them are doing a phenomenal job doing a lot of storytelling with just body language. And faces, yeah. Just, just body language and no lines. We're just taking care of business and good for them. But like... From a showrunner perspective. Writers, like what... Why are we not doing a little bit more? All right. Well, do you have anything else? No. That was it? That was it. All right. Well, cheers. I'm out of wine. He pours himself heavy pours. That's my theory. And he gives me a little pours. All right, guys. Well, that's <laughs> going to conclude Addie's reaction to the Bills. I knew that this episode was going to be a tough one. And I was... I knew you were probably 99.9% .9 positive going to be upset with the outcome. Yeah. There was part of me that was like, you know, maybe she'll just like be like, ah. But mm, the bigger half of me realized like, nope, this is probably going to be the first time in this journey that Addie's going to be very Not happy. bothered by the outcome yeah. of the show. And luckily I mentally prepared for that moment. And so I hope you guys also did and you don't feel We still like, love the show. I still love the show. That's the other thing I show. need to stress to you is, and I tell this to people all the time. Yes, this happened. Yes, this was the penultimate episode, all that. This cannot change, ruin, alter no, your opinion I on the still... other six no. incredible seasons of seven. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Well, depending on how you feel about seven. But yeah, no, I still love this show. There's nothing it's not like fuck this show, I hate it. It's just Because people be do have that it's reaction. It's because I like this show so much that this is disappointing. You know? Any other show is probably already written this way and it's like, okay, things happen and you have to just kind of like be like, what the fuck? But this show has never been that. It's always been, like, taking you on the character's journey with them and making you, like, feel one way and then a second later feel another way. Like, so that's been their whole thing. So to leave something this big kind of, like, not fleshed out just feels, like... Upsetting. Yeah. It's just not Game of Thrones-ish to me in the writing and directing style. But I still love the show. It's only because I love the show that I am so disappointed. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I just I just tell people all the time, like, moving forward, you have to see the final season, obviously, mm -hmm. to, like, know what, what happens. happens. But then moving forward, I just pretend that the show ended when Danny was sailing to Restoros. Right. Like, that's like, when the show ended. I will say, like, episode three... So. I think is, like, one of the best episodes in the show. Like, so it's worth, like, season eight is, like, already, to me, worth it for that episode. But, yeah, everything that happens afterwards is kind of a left The off. first three are great. Everything. It's the last yeah. three. <laughs> Four just... and five have kind of been, like, okay, great. And this is the last episode. Yeah. We're on the last episode now. We sure are. So... Off we go. Off we go. Uh, that's going to conclude this uh, reaction, though, guys. I hope you enjoyed re Addie's reaction to negative content. <laughs> um, and if you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date. We have one more episode left and then we're done with Game of Thrones. And that's, oh my god! That's really, really depressing for me to think about. We have one more! What the 
and then we'll just start over. And then we'll just we're gonna do it one more And then we'll just watch season one again. It's such a long and uh, just exciting show that you really can f- start from season one again, and, and then you're like, and get oh, I forgot all it. this happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like so much happens in the show that it's really easy to just like forget about everything that. Happened. Yeah, I'll and, like, just never watch season eight again, and that'll be fine. Yeah. We'll just live our lives that just way. Ended at season six. Yeah, that's cool. All right, well, we're going to do a little, like, maybe 10 to 15 minute break, spruce them up, take some shots, and then we're going to be doing the final episode of Thrones. Oh, my God. I'm going to try and milk this 10 to 15 minutes. You guys, what the fuck? One <sighs> <sighs> more drink. Just I, I know you don't have one, but. You can give me a sip of yours. All right, well, we hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and we will see you in the next video.